son of the president pleading not guilty yesterday to felony gun charges in federal court in Delaware, a couple of months after a plea deal that would have dismissed all of it fell completely apart. The judge ordering the first son to get a job, good luck with that, and avoid all alcohol as some of the conditions to avoid detention. His attorney already planning a motion to dismiss, saying, quote, these charges are the result of political pressure from President Trump and his MAGA allies to force the Justice Department to ignore the law. Former state prosecutor Elliot Felig joins us right now here in Studio M. Elliot, good to have you. Good morning. Uh, how much trouble is Hunter Biden in? You know, the prosecutors basically already showed their hand in this case back in July when they agreed at least tentatively to a no jail disposition. Right. The key factors there, the fact that it was a first arrest or that he doesn't have a record, the fact that it's under the law a nonviolent crime, the fact that there's a constitutional question hanging over the statute, those factors are all still in place. So even though the deal fell apart, I think the prosecutors still are open to wrapping this up with a no jail plea. But here's the thing. He's guilty of these, right. it, it does appear, because what he did was he signed on that form when he bought the Colt re revolver, I'm not on drugs. But as it turns right. out, he was, and he possessed the gun for, uh, I think, 10 or 11 days, something like that. I mean, it looks like they got the goods on him. So there's got to be some punishment, doesn't it? Oh, th there's no question that they basically acknowledged all of the elements, all of the facts that constitute the crime. The question is, is a plea going to also cover potential tax charges or a potential failure to register as a foreign agent? My guess is it's the same cast of characters. They're going to be back in front of the same judge on the adjourned date. Same defense attorney, same right. prosecutors. Uh, Abby Lowell, who's also Bob Menendez's sure. attorney, so he's very busy these days. But in the end, with the same cast of characters and the same facts, I do think you're ultimately going to see this wrapped up in a plea. Yesterday, uh, at the conclusion of the briefing in the White House uh, Brady Room, uh, the press secretary was asked about Hunter, and this is what she had to say. The president's son, Hunter, pleaded not guilty to a gun charge in court today. Does the White House have a comment on that? Has the president been in touch with his son about it? The president loves him, his son. Uh, I'm not going to uh, speak to any private conversations that this president has with any member of his family that is private. You know, that appears to be something new that uh, she said yesterday. I'm not going to speak to any private conversations that the president has with his family. Because in the past, you know, Joe Biden is now in trouble with the Republicans because right. he supposedly lied to America about, I never talked to my son about his overseas business dealings, right. even though it appears he has. And the goalposts have moved a couple of times on that one as to whether he was aware of what his son was doing and whether he participated in discussions who he met. The goalposts may yet move again with regard to the Hunter Biden case. Right. So now I'm not going to speak to uh, talk about anything they talked about, which right. is a little crazy. Real quick, uh, one other thing. Uh, the uh, judge down in lower Manhattan imposed a partial gag order on the former president because of disparaging remarks he made on Truth Social about the court clerk supposedly being Chuck Schumer's girlfriend or something like that. Right. He put that up, then took it down. Yeah, that's barely a gag order because the typical gag order re go goes to the substance of the case and it's meant to prevent intimidation of witnesses or it's meant to pre prevent prejudicial information from getting in front of potential jurors. If it were a broader gag order, then there'd be a basis for challenging it. I think because it's so narrow and limited, they're not going to even bother to challenge it. One other point uh, you were talking about during the right. commercial, you think the president is trying to do something here. I got a theory. It hasn't gotten much play, but I think he's actively engaged in the civil case because he's going to use that as a basis subsequently to seek a delay in the criminal cases. It's a much better argument to say, I need a delay to prepare my defense because I was involved in another court case where I'm a defendant right. than saying I'm too busy campaigning. Because it sounds like this particular court case could run through Christmas. Could take over two months, yeah. All right. Elliot, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.